Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the new types of objects known as G-objects. These very unusual and very peculiar star-like objects that orbit very close to the central black hole and don't seem to exist anywhere else. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. This beautiful picture created by Jack Quirlo uh, of UCLA kind of shows us what these objects might look like, at least what we think they look like. But what exactly are they? Well, if you look at the center of our galaxy, you'll discover a really, really extreme environment. There's a lot of things happening here, a lot of them are extremely energetic and a lot of life would probably not survive here for a very long time. Even though simulations like this present this region as somewhat similar to what we see around us in uh, where our sun is, in reality the energies here are so dramatic and everything is so extremely chaotic that most planets and most stars very likely get destroyed really really quickly. And the closer to the central black hole you get, the more dramatic things get. So, a few years ago, the scientists observed a passage of what's known as G2 cloud very close to the black hole that resulted in the formation of unusual gas that very likely fell into the black hole. But we didn't really know until now what exactly is happening here. And more specifically, we had no idea where this cloud came from and if there are other similar clouds around the black hole. We actually knew about at least one other cloud known as G1, but it didn't really have such a dramatic shift as we've observed with the G2 cloud that came very close to the black hole, probably the closest so far. And so it took a few years for the scientists to try to figure out what exactly this is and how this may have been created and more importantly if there are other similar objects in this region. And as you can probably tell from the title, there are. There are at least six now. The scientists from UCLA discovered at least four more of these G-clouds and were actually able to identify their peculiar features and explain how they may have formed and why they exist in this region. And the major feature of all of these objects is that they tend to stretch out and become a lot more longer, losing a lot of mass as they get closer to the black hole, while as they move away they become compact again and resemble star-like objects. And this is what makes them so unique and so unusual and very different from anything else in this region. And to try to understand all of this, we have to also understand that there are a lot more stars and a lot more material in this region. As a matter of fact, the average density in this region is about 1 billion times larger than it is where we are located. In other words, this is a tremendously hectic environment. And because of this, there is a lot of different stars, and some of these stars might come as binaries. In other words, stars that come as a pair and orbit around one another, which actually represents a lot of different stars out there. The nearby Alpha Centauri um, is actually a binary star, there are two objects in the system. But one thing we know about binaries is that if you place them around a much larger and much more uh, gravitationally potent object, they will eventually start acting a little bit strange. So here's an example. Let's take a star and place it in orbit around the black hole. Notice how its orbit is relatively circular, even though in reality it would still be kind of hectic. But now, what if I turn this star into a binary system? Basically, I place another object in orbit around the star. Well, because of the dramatic tidal effects and a lot of gravitational power that this black hole possesses, these stars will no longer be attached to each other, and eventually they'll probably either fly apart or might end up combining into one. And this combination of two stars will actually result in the formation of a somewhat exotic object. Now here, I think if I actually leave them running, they'll probably just create a supernova, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a kind of an intermediary object, basically a massive amount of gas that's not necessarily a star because it never really gets to form into a spherical object and is not a cloud either. So it's kind of like an in-between state. It's a cloud and a star at the same time. When it's closer to the black hole, when it's approaching its so-called periostron or the closest part of the orbit, it will eventually get stretched and turn into a very long dusty object. But then, as it moves away from the black hole, it very likely will start condensing again and form into more of a star-like object. But because its orbit probably takes anywhere from a few decades to maybe a few hundred years or maybe a few thousand years, it never truly gets to solidify into a single piece or an object that can survive for much longer when it comes so close to the black hole. 
And this, in the essence, is what these G objects are. The scientists behind this paper believe that they originally were binary objects, binary stars. And eventually, through the interaction with the black hole, they kind of stretched, they started to, to become a lot more unstable, and became these very unusual, permanent, stretchy objects. Basically, not really clouds, not really stars, but a bit of both. So they do possess cloud-like shapes and possibly have a lot of cloud-like features, but in the middle they do have these solid objects that kind of possess a lot of mass that eventually pull all of the material back in, creating a star-like object when it's farther away from the black hole. And even though these objects kind of look like a gas cloud, they for the most part behave like stars and actually remain star-like for most of their orbit. Their orbits can be anywhere from 100 to a few thousand years, and most of this time they do behave like typical stars. Now you might have seen a video I made previously a few months ago about the flares in the middle of our galaxy coming from the supermassive black hole in the center, and these flares are still unknown. Back in August, our black hole essentially became extremely bright for a little bit and then started to dim once again, and the scientists believe that there is a possibility that G objects are responsible for these effects. Basically, as some of the material falls into the black hole, it will create these unusual flaring effects. So it's possible that what we're observing is the eventual interaction between Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole in the middle, and the G objects that pass there every few hundreds or thousands of years. And even though a G2 object came really, really close to the black hole, a lot of other G objects never really come that close but nevertheless possess very similar features. They get stretched out a little bit and then become a lot more compact when they're farther away from the black hole. So all six objects discovered so far seem to possess very similar properties, making them an actual object that's different from typical stars, binary stars, or any other objects we normally are familiar with. From what the scientists observed so far, they seem to be going from in between these really stretched and distorted objects when they come really close to the black hole, to looking like normal typical stars when they're much farther away. And this is what makes them so unique. They are very dynamic and they do change in time. And because things are really, really far away here, this is about 26,000 light years away from our solar system, it's going to be really difficult to try to identify how they formed, what other effects they have on other stars and the black hole itself, and most importantly, if they can create effects that would be so dramatic that it could somehow affect our solar system and our planet. Now, that's probably unlikely, but we still need to study them in a little bit more detail. And when it comes to star mergers, today we believe that a typical star merger should take about a million years to complete. So if a binary star approaches the black hole and its orbit is only a few thousand years, it's never truly going to combine into a single star and will always remain as a kind of a binary mixture. And this is what we believe is happening here. And since our galaxy in general has so many different binary stars, and at the same time since it's quite possible for many binary stars to combine into one star, this could be an explanation to many different other mysteries we're observing around the galaxy that we still can't really explain. So for example, certain stars out there, like the so-called oldest star in the universe, might have been a result of a very unusual binary um, combination. Basically, when two stars join together and mix their material, they'll eventually turn into something completely different, something that we wouldn't be able to explain right away unless we knew that this is exactly what happened. In other words, by using binary stars and by using the um, basically joining of two binary stars into one, we could maybe explain a lot of other mysteries that we're not really clear about just yet. But more importantly in regards to this study, we now understand that this particular simulation created by ASO a few years ago might not really be that accurate. It seems that the gas itself did not stretch as much as is presented in this video. As a matter of fact, it seems that only the outside part of the gas was stretched, but the inner part of the object remained as a solid part, as a kind of a star-like object. In other words, once again resembling something similar to what you see in this beautiful illustration. Some of the projections here are formed by the outer gas and some of this will end up in the black hole, but the vast majority of mass here, including the inner part, will still remain as a kind of a star-like object, very likely still producing energy and a lot of light, similar to a typical star. And of course what's kept it all together is this inner mass, this stellar object on the inside, which all of the G objects seem to possess. And so the next question now becomes, are we going to be able to find these objects elsewhere in the galaxy or in the universe? Or is this uniquely only the object you can find close to supermassive black holes? Would we ever be able to find a very similar object somewhere else? 
Now this is something we're probably not going to be able to answer for a few years, but I guess you never know. And this is something that I'm definitely going to follow up with another video in the future, so do subscribe if you still haven't. Also, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, but on that note, that's really it. Thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, maybe help support this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, but either way, hopefully you'll come back tomorrow to watch another video. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.